like the first century. Shalom, beloved, and welcome to Revival Cry from Israel to the Nations. We are going to start talking today about the eternal gospel. And I want you to turn with me to Revelations chapter 14 to learn about the eternal gospel. Revelation chapter 14 from verse 6 and 7 says to us, And I saw another angel flying in mid-heaven, having an eternal gospel to preach to those who live on the earth and to every nation and tribe and tongue and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens and the earth and sea and springs of water. Right after that, another angel came, a second one followed, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great, she who has made all the nations drink of the wine of the passion of her immorality. The eternal gospel. Many people speak about the gospel, but they do not know the eternal gospel. By the very words eternal gospel, that means that this gospel was, is, and will be. In other words, this is the gospel forever. Any other gospel, any other name for the gospel will always fall within the confines of the eternal gospel. That is our frame. But what is the eternal gospel? Now we can see the angel he is flying and he's saying, these are his words, fear God. In other words, the eternal gospel and every other gospel within it will have to have that element. It's fear God. And then it says, and give him glory for the hour of his judgment has come. So there's a great connection between the hour of judgment and between a revival of the fear of God. In fact, without the fear of God, we cannot go into any kind of revival because the fear of God is the foundation of the eternal gospel. Now, we're going to take a look and see that the fear of God comes with a spirit, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Open with me Isaiah chapter 11, please. We're going to go to Isaiah chapter 11, and we will read about the fear of the Lord as a spirit. We're going to read from verse 1 and 2. And actually, let's go to verse 3. That's wonderful. It says, Then a shoot will spring from the stem of Jesse, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. The spirit of Yahweh the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge of the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord, the fear of Yahweh, the I am. And he will not judge by what his eyes see, nor make a decision by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he will judge the poor and decide with fairness for the afflicted of the earth. And he will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Hallelujah. We're seeing Yeshua here. We're saying that he's the root of Jesse. He's born from the family of David, the royal lineage of David, whose father was Jesse. So when we talk about Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah, his genealogy, he is the root of Jesse. His great, great, great grandfather was Jesse. And so it says here that Yeshua, the Messiah, who is the branch from the root of Jesse, he will come and he will have a spirit upon him. And we can see that there is a sevenfold spirit, which is the spirit of the Lord. Altogether, it's the Holy Spirit, but it has sevenfold revelations of the spirit. And one of them is the spirit of the knowledge of the fear of the Lord, the spirit of the knowledge of the fear of Yahweh, the I am in the Hebrew. Now it says that Yeshua himself, this root that comes from the branch of Jesse, will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will delight in the fear of Yahweh. And you, maybe, maybe in your mind you're thinking fear and delight and fear and delight go together. And in fact, the fear of Yahweh brings about delight to the soul. When we walk in the fear of the Lord, then all of a sudden clarity and purity comes in like never before. Confusion simply goes out. 
Now, the spirit of the fear of the Lord or the, the spirit of the knowledge of the fear of the Lord is so important because the word of God says that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Flow with me right now and we're going to go to Psalms 111 verse 10. Psalm 111 verse 10 and we will see what the word of God says about the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord, and I'm going to call him by his name, Yahweh, is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding of all those who do his commandments, his praise endures forever. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. In other words, there is no wisdom apart from the fear of Yahweh. There is no wisdom apart from the fear of the Lord. Any other wisdom that doesn't have that as its foundation and its central theme is the wisdom from the world at best, the wisdom from the devil at worst. And then it says, a good understanding have all those that do his commandments. In other words, when we become a doer of the commandments, a doer of the word, we get a good understanding. Most people, when they talk about the word of God, they say, I don't understand. Many of them say, I don't really know what God is saying, do you? And the issue that they do not understand because they do not have the fear of the Lord and because they do not do his commandments. When we have the fear of the Lord, we are going to tremble at his word. Come with me to Isaiah chapter 66 and see who the Lord really loves. He says, the one that trembles at his word. Let's go Isaiah chapter 66. And we are going to see in verse 1 and 2, verse 1 and 2 of this chapter of Isaiah. Very important chapter because it's the last chapter of the book of Isaiah. It says, Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where then is the house you could build for me? And where is the place that I may rest? For my hand made all these things. Thus all these things came into being, declares Yahweh the Lord. But to this one I will look, to him who is humble and contrite of spirit and who trembles at my word. Now many people want to build a lot of things for God. They have a full packed, full agenda with conferences, conventions, with uh, cathedrals, with great buildings and great churches. While all these things are good and wonderful, what good does it do to build him anything if the fear of the Lord is not there? There's so many cathedrals and so many houses supposedly of worship that is actually for the worship of man and not for the worship of God. The Lord says, to this one I will look, to the one that is contrite and humble in heart and trembles at my word. In the Hebrew, the word trembles is the word chared. Chared means he is really deep within him, has a deep inner heart tremor and shaking. In other words, the word shakes him from within. When you read the word, when you hear the word from the Holy Spirit, when you're hearing the word as I'm speaking it to you, something in your heart is shaken, the one that trembles at my word. But there is no way that we can tremble on the word lest we are humble of heart and contrite of spirit. And that's the reason why the key for revival is repentance. The key for revival that I've been speaking about in Revival Cry, the theme of Revival Cry, Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people that are called by my name humble themselves and then comes pray and seek my face. I'm gonna stay with the humble themselves first because that humble in Hebrew is surrender themselves. And this is exactly what he's talking about here, Yahweh the Lord. He's saying when we surrender ourselves and we have a contrite heart, then